It's showtime. BS and Via Media in association with STWF TV, the podcasting network. We present to you BS and Bourbon. And now here's Craig and Dale. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in BS and Bourbon. I am Dale, and with me, we got the California Cajun Craig. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? Nice to be uh, talking Saints a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. So uh, last time we talked, it was after the draft. Um, and so now we're leading into Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to you, Craig. It's not 4th of July. It's Independence Day. Independence Day. Unfortunately, like 70 other countries also have Independence Days. So you can still call it the 4th of July and Independence Day. <laughs> Man, I'm not celebrating the, the Jamaican Independence Day. It's it America. But what, what about you, man? You got any plans for the fourth? You gonna do something fun? Blow something up? Um, no, no, I, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna blow anything up. Um, I'm I'm definitely going to eat good though. You know, I'm get go. some uh, get some smoked food in my life, and um, you know, this this the American way: drink a beer and, and enjoy some good food. You know. There you go. See, I live in the great state of California, where you're not allowed to blow anything up. Uh, so I won't be either. Um. But I think what yeah. barbecue in a pool is is what a, the four founding fathers would have liked, you know. Yeah, I'm sure they would enjoy that. Um, yeah, take it, off the powdered wig a little bit, you know. Get down with it. I will say it's it's like that here um, in Little Rock proper, because you're not allowed to uh, have fireworks or whatever. Okay, allowed. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> people do it all the time. All right, but you know you can't get a ticket or whatever if they if they catch you. So um you, you're on your own but um well yeah. I'm, I'm los angeles county too so if you hear stuff exploding it's usually just gunfire anyway who cares <laughs> there you go there you go what's up bobby how you doing man <laughs> yeah man um but yeah the uh the fireworks they have these days man they are like missiles and bombs bro like it's <laughs> god it's bless crazy. america <laughs> yeah it is it is crazy um but do you in, usually enjoy uh fireworks so uh, i was a big on, fireworks on guy before i had kids because now i got little okay. ones so i have to figure out are they babies and they're gonna get scared or do they want to go blow stuff because my my wife wants to blow up everything i wouldn't have a house if she had her way so it would just <laughs> everything our last uh our last new year's and down in louisiana we set off a few hundred dollars worth of explosives it was it was a good time it was a good yeah. time i'm not a huge firework guy but i can get down with it okay yeah i'm if i'm if i'm uh enjoying i'm usually the guy just watching and you know drinking the beer or whatever i don't usually get on out there oh. and, and blow things up but you know Oh, yeah. No, I'm usually much too inebriated to actually help with the explosives. You don't want me <laughs> handling stuff like that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the fireworks are at night. That means I've been drinking for like six hours. I'm not going to drink six right. hours and blow stuff up. I'll drink like two hours and blow stuff up. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's moderation, right? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, and since we are talking about uh, the 4th of July, listen, I cannot... You cannot have Fourth of July without my guy, my guy Terry. All right, shout out to Terry. Okay, if you've never watched this video before, you're in for a treat. Okay. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Two cars, huh? <laughs> you got two cars coming two different ways. Here you go, here. Okay. So now he's lighting it up. Seems awfully bright outside. There you go, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. Oh, Lord. Lord, please. Oh, Lord. Oh, please. Terry refused. What the fuck are you doing, Terry? 
Put it in reverse, Terry. Come on. Terry. <laughs> I need that sound. <laughs> yes, man. That's like one of my I, favorites. I, when you saw, I saw you pull a video up. I thought you were about to talk about uh, Saints legend Jason Pierre Paul. <laughs> I so messed up, man. I so messed up. <laughs> no, no, not talking about Pierre Paul, though. So not, it just count his millions of dollars just fine with all of his remaining fingers. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It, it, this is true. He, he's got he's got more money than I do. So he got the bag. It's cool. I mean, does it matter if he can't teach his kids how to count to ten? Who cares? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. He, they do it fine. <laughs> All right, man, let's get into some Saints. Please. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is um, it's sort of connected to the Saints, but it's it's Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks is covering the Giants offseason right now. And the first thing that they were talking about was uh, Saquon Barkley. Mm. And so of course we got AK. He's looking for a new contract, and now he's retweeting um, what's going on with this. And listen, there, Hard Knocks gets gets the the inside information right, and you're here usually hear the players talking most of the time in Hard Knocks, but this is off season edition, mm -hmm. and so you're getting the unfiltered um, feelings from player personnel groups, the GM, and they're talking about the value of the running back position. And that's tough. Yeah. And Daquan Barkley, you know, he, he, he went to the, he went to the Eagles and now you get to see the conversation behind the scenes of the people in charge making, uh, making these decisions. The same people, well, not the same people, but the same type of people are making the decisions about AK where he's looking for a new contract. Yeah. So do you see the relationship between the Saints and AK ever getting repaired? I mean, honestly, I don't. Um, but that's kind of the pessimist in me. I, I, I kind of think that, you know, the Kendra Miller thing, you know, getting Jamal Williams on a decent contract, all of this was in place to move on from AK when you could. Uh, you know, I, I think they kind of expected this, the drop off. Pete Carmichael's okay. offense was clearly part of the problem in that production drop off and everything. Uh, you know, it's just, it seems like with his age and his production, everything like that, he wants that McCaffrey money. And McCaffrey's still fresh because he spent the first eight years hurt. And right. uh, now that he's actually playing, he looks younger than he is because he spent all that all that time on IR. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you know what? It's uh, it's one of those things. I hope that it, that they can mend it and they can bring him back because I think this offense is perfectly built for what AK is good at. I think it could be, he could be much closer to what he was with Breeze and, you know, those ex that, using him in more explosive ways. But to me, yeah, I, I think the writing's on the wall. I, I see shades of Mike Thomas with this, and um, I'm worried we don't see him play again. He's got to play out this year, right? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you see, like we said about McCaffrey, that longevity, you know, if you don't put an extra miles on the tires, they're staying Three to right. four million for a fifth round. But, like, his contract won't wear out, won't, won't go out, right? Like, he'll, he'll still be under contract if he don't play this year. Yeah, he could sit out. That's what I'm saying. He's, he could he could force a trade or he could sit. Mm. Okay. No, he's he's technically on for two years, but there is no chance he plays that second year. It's kind of one of those. Right, no way. So, I yeah. mean, if he, if he knows that, oh, this is my last real year, they're going to run me into the ground and, you know, and burn up any kind of value I have outside of that, why would he? He's got the money to retire, and he's got interest outside of the NFL. So, I mean, he's not pushed to play if he doesn't want to. Yeah, he's got interest outside the NFL, but he wants to. He wants the contract, and I think the only way to get that contract is going to be showing, uh, showing in other NFL teams that you're healthy and that you can survive an entire season. And so, to me, he's got to come in and play this entire season, look healthy, put up you know, typical AK numbers. So next year when he hit free agency, he can get a, a decent deal. Now, I don't know if he's going to get a uh, Christian McCaffrey kind of money, but he, he can have a Christian McCaffrey kind of year and then be warranted uh, to, to get that kind of money. So it, it's definitely not going to come from the Saints, in my opinion. I mean, the Saints are in the best situation 
He is under yeah. contract. He does need to, like you said, he needs to prove himself to the league. Uh, but like I said, I, I don't. AK seems like the guy that if he doesn't want, if he doesn't want the situation he's in, he might just walk away. And mm-hmm. that's my fear is that he's willing to just sit on the couch or go tour the world or whatever he's doing right now. You know, go build hospitals in Africa like he just did or something like that. You know, he doesn't have to do this. So if he doesn't want to, he's not gonna. So to me. I think the best chance of him making his money is he stays with the Saints. I don't think anyone else is paying him value right now that he's looking for. Now, he's not getting McCaffrey money from the Bills or somebody. Uh, so, I mean, it works out best for both of us if he extends and stays and we, we drag this along, especially if he's not the workhorse anymore. That could extend his shelf life. Uh, but the ball's in his court. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it's something watching the, you know, the, the player personnel people talk about uh, the different running backs that was in um, free agency, how they compare this guy, how they compare that guy. Um, and then talking about, you know, the age factor. They talk about wear and tear, mileage on, on the body and stuff like that. These are all things we discuss just as fans thinking this is what they're discussing, but that's exactly what they're discussing. So, yeah, it, it sucks. It's, it's a reminder is a business and you know that sometimes that yeah he, uh, players like cattle you know and it's uh, they're really well paid rich cattle who are gonna play a game for a living and then retire wealthily but they're still they're still commodities they're still assets yeah and uh you know that's to, exactly right. to have that top down look you kind of have to think of it that way yep that's exactly right exactly right um yo i forgot to mention this what you drinking greg oh good <laughs> never ask uh, I, I'm on a. I'm trying to get my my body as cleaned out and ready for football season as possible. So I'm not drinking a lot lately. Uh, but just for you and for BS and Bourbon, I do have a nice little uh, bo- bottled in Bond. Uh, shoot, I forgot the name of the bottle because it's in the other room. But it is fantastic. It's aged seven years. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon, and it's delightful. And the name will come to me in a minute. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. Like it's like drinking sweet fire. It's beautiful. <laughs> a sweet fire. It's like. <laughs> It's being embraced by by your mother if your mother is the devil and your mm. suckling heat of sin and misery. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, that's a good bourbon. That's dramatic, but that's a good bourbon. As soon as I remember the name, everyone should buy some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, still repping the sheep dog, uh, peanut butter bourbon here. It's good stuff. Make sure you get you some of that. Stuff. Have, have we tried mixing that with like a with like a grape or something liqueur like a like a strawberry liqueur and try to get like a pb and j going yet we got to try that um yeah yeah that's a that's a that's an interesting idea i think we should try it mm-hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna get some of that and make a peanut butter and jelly martini and it's gonna be awesome okay let's go let's do this yeah. <laughs> let's do this okay Next door we got, Craig. Isaiah Foskey and Peyton Turner are currently at Von Miller's sack camp. So, do you think this will help them? And are you excited to see them out there mingling with the the older guys? Cam Jordan's there, too. Um, but it is basically a camp to you know for the pass rushers there. They all so, pass so two, so one, yeah, I'm glad they're there. Any any exposure to to other techniques, other styles is always gonna be beneficial, especially young guys who are still putting together their repertoire. Absolutely no problem with it. Uh is it gonna help? Uh it depends. If they listen to Von Miller, they're gonna learn about how how to be really good for a couple of years and then fall off a cliff. If they listen to Cam Jordan, they'll be they'll be really good at almost getting to the quarterback and letting him throw a, a pass right before he gets there. Uh, so it's really who you learn from, you know. Uh, it, uh, it, I'm joking, obviously, but yeah, get get the guys out there. You know, you talk about these guys who are trying to make their way in the league, and they're going to these camps and they're doing all the stuff. And what's more important to me is not that they're at the, not what they're doing at the camp, is that they're there, that they're putting in that off season work. They're trying to get better. They're working on their craft. This is all important stuff. Uh, so you know, it, it, not as much that I don't think they're going to learn a new way to pass rush that they didn't know before. Both of these guys have been playing football for most of their lives at this point but you know it can't hurt i like it yeah uh look talking to those those veterans or productive veterans like matt crosby and Mm. stuff like that like 
I, I, I want to pick their brains. Like those are the best guys in the league right now. So yeah, uh, just being able to pick their brains, I think that's uh, valuable. And yeah, you never, never know what, what he picks up from um, just being out there, you know, with somebody else. So the main thing is they're healthy. Um, they're working on their craft right now. So that, that should just make them better. But I, I love seeing them healthy and I'm hoping just the fact that they're staying he- uh, staying active out there will keep them healthy during the season and it's going to benefit us. That's what I'm okay. hoping for. So. And if they could, if they could pick uh, Max Crosby's brain, that's the one you want to learn from because he's clearly a lunch pail shows up early guy without any athletic ability. So if you can get his skill set, his mindset put on these more athletic, faster guys, that could benefit. I'm not saying nothing. What are you saying? Come on now. We're a family. Yeah, yeah exactly. Man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, let's look at let's look at the roster here of the Saints and let's talk about some changes that you would make if there are any changes that you would make. Um, you know, where where should we look to add players if we're indeed talking about trying to make it to the Super Bowl? Um, we had the the Bucks win the division three years in a row. So we can't let that happen again, Greg. Gross. Just saying it out loud is just disgusting. So, yeah, that's an interesting question because it's not what the Saints are doing. The Saints are not trying to win it all this year. Uh, their decisions have, have kind of proven that. They didn't restructure a couple of the contracts they could have. Uh, they didn't go out and sign big names. You know, the guy they did sign, the big signing was Chase Young, who's a very moderate contract. It's got a lot of incentives in it. So it's not like they spent... They're cleaning up the cap. Everyone tells them to clean up the cap. They're doing it. And then people are mad that they didn't do more. Uh, so so if the goal is to win it all this year, I address safety. Uh, they're the best safeties in the world, basically, are all free agents. I would go get a safety. Uh, I want to say the guy from Denver is it Simmons. Uh, but they did okay. give up 70 points in a game once last year. So how important can he possibly be? But, yeah, I get a safety. I get a safety, maybe a, maybe a D tackle. I don't know who's out there that's going to be better than what you have, though. Yeah, with D tackle, uh, that's been a, an area of concern. Um, that was that was what I wanted to do in the draft uh, is select some sort of D tackle like around the fifth round. Um, and I get you know it's a fifth rounder, but still um, having a, a younger uh, body in there, especially something different than what you already have on the roster, I think that could have uh, benefited us a little bit, but um. I'll be I'll be happy to see what what Breesy does um, in his second season on so side of uh, Colin Saunders. You wanted to get a D tackle in the fifth round because the one in the sixth round wasn't early enough for you. That that extra round would have made it better. Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I like the guy we got in the sixth round too. As the same school as Penning. Uh, he's he has the bench press record at his school. Like he, yeah, he's he's a run stuffer, man. I like him. I hope he makes the team. Well, I, I hope he does too, because because we got him. But yeah, same school as Penning. Like, what what are we doing here? It's not a powerhouse. What, oh, you mean our starting doing? right tackle? He's the <laughs> Don't disrespect our starting right tackle. Uh, we hope he's a starting right tackle. Okay. Currently, you know, as, as we speak presently. <laughs> yeah well yeah for sure um this is ryan ryan ramchek is definitely out this season and pro- possibly his entire career now so well it, it's um, degenerative too so the longer you wait the worse it's it's gonna get so if he's not playing yeah. this year he's not playing again yes yes yeah. and it sucks man he yeah. was a great player for a long time but you know it happens yeah i look He's gonna be fine as far as a as a you know person and everything like that. Oh yeah, a lot of money this year to sit home. Um, <laughs> um, what do you think about linebacker though? Because you know we, we did pick up Willie Gay. Um, Pete Werner is in a, a contract year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Demario Davis is you know kind of getting long in the tooth. They mm-hmm. did uh, draft Jalen Ford here to be the successor, but. Um, your guy, DeMarco Jackson, still on the, on the team, for sure. Mm-hmm. 
But still there. What do you think still, of, still has about the record? Still has an NFL. Yeah, record. exactly. <laughs> um, you know, what do you honestly, think about the depth at the position, though? You know, I felt real bad about it uh, end of last season because uh, Werner had kind of a down year, and Demario is obviously, you know, he's getting up there in age. He doesn't play like it, but he is. Uh, and now mm-hmm. I feel real good about it, man. I mean, I know Gay's only a one year contract. We signed another guy, uh, I'll say Boyd or something like that. Uh, and I love, I love Ford as a developmental pick out of Texas. I feel pretty good about the depth right now, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, even even Jackson, who's you know he hasn't panned out as a starter. He's been a, a valuable special teams guy. Uh, you know, he's he obviously been making making plays, scoring touchdowns, unlike some people's linebackers they wanted to draft. So, like you know, I, I like I like where we're at on linebacker. I didn't before, but you know, a couple of signings and a draft pick will do that to you. Yeah. Um, do you believe like Willie Gay and Pete Werner? is essentially fighting for a roster spot next season based on the production this season? Yes. I think it's Warner's job to lose, but I think okay. one of those guys is getting a contract extension and the other one's not. I think it's an either yeah. or. Unless yes. something terrible happens yes. to Davis and you know that you have to try to replace both spots. But yeah, in, in my mind, they're competing for that spot and I think it's Warner's to lose. Yeah. Um, with them having that kind of disappointing season, Last year, I, I kind of think this is like insurance policy too. Yeah. But also, yeah, I really believe that they're trying to try something different to uh, stop those mobile quarterbacks that we just can't stop. Yeah. And hopefully Willie Gay is the answer for that. Um, but it, it's a lot to put on one guy. Yeah, it, It's right? quite the assumption to say that uh, Willie Gay is more of an athletic player than uh, Pete Werner. I don't know why anyone would make that kind of a – kind of a guess about those players, but he is shown to be very, he, he can make plays in space like that. He's good. Uh, th- that's two years in a row now that they've made a move directly uh, because of mobile quarterbacks. They also talked about when they drafted Foskey because he was a faster, lighter guy than right. they're drafting. Yes. Supposed to be. Yes. So, you know, I, they're, they're clearly trying. They see what a problem it is. And looking at our schedule this year, I hope it fucking worked. So, <laughs> No, they, I, I like linebacker. I, I think we're in a good spot. Yep. Yep. Well, look, I'm 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 hoping um I'm hoping Willie Gay does his thing for sure to to stop that uh mobile quarterback thing. Look, we have to be able to tackle the quarterback, period. Anytime we, we get our hands around him, like we need to be able to get him down. I'm so sick of quarterbacks escaping. I'm so sick of it. <laughs> Look at, at the stats and our, our D tackles had uh, decent sack numbers, really. I think Shepard had had a couple, and I think uh, Brizzy had four and a half. And they each could have had like five if we finished plays in, inside the pocket. It's it's remarkable how how often we would get there and not finish. It is the most frustrating thing in the world watching your team. You're like, oh, got him. Oh, shit. No, no, he's outside. Oh, he ran it in. That, <laughs> that Vikings game. Oh, my God. I can't even talk about it without getting upset. <laughs> exactly. Man. Exactly. So, all right. Let's take a uh, quick break. We'll be back. And when we get back, we're going to be talking offensive line, Craig's favorite topic. <laughs> so, we'll be right back. AirPods. Convenient and small. Versatile with high fidelity. AirPods. Listen to music or talk on the phone. AirPods. Now with concealable subwoofer. Now drop that face. This is an emergency message. Stop what you're doing and hit the like button. Also comment and subscribe. Thank you. We now return you to your program. We're back. BS and bourbon. I hadn't Craig, seen that. Are you going to get some AirPods? I didn't see. I hadn't seen that ad before. That seems oddly pointed. <laughs> yeah, man. Get some AirPods, bro. <laughs> I got them. Y'all shame me into getting AirPods. All right, it happened. <laughs> ah, get that. Uh. Syllable subwoofer, make sure you feel that bass, man. It's it's important. Okay? All about that bass. 
That's right. That's right. So let's talk offensive line, Craig. Yes. It's a big deal. Now, when we, we're talking offensive line, um, I am talking about the rankings from PFF, and they ranked the New Orleans Saints. Well, they graded, they graded every team. Pretty much right, and the the top the top offensive line, according to PFF, is the Detroit Lions. Penny Sewell will do that to you. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. So let's find the Saints in this list, and I'm I am scrolling and scrolling, I am scrolling, I'm oh, scrolling, <laughs> and we are dead last, Craig. We are third, dead last. Second, no kidding. My yes, God. PFF put us Ooh. dead last. Your Ooh. thoughts. All right, listen, if they're basing it on last year's running game, yeah, totally. I think I think we were last in the league in, in yards per attempt last year. We had guys like Alvin Kamara not get four yards to carry. Like, yeah, we that's deserved, you know, played like dog shit last year. I don't think for a second we're going to be 32nd in the league this upcoming season. Uh, yeah, I, I've said it 100 times on this show to people on the street, just chase people down. Listen, listen, I got to tell you about how the coaching let down the Saints. And I think the, the coaching around the offensive line has squandered such elite talent that they've drafted. And I don't, I don't, I'm not just saying, Oh, I think this guy's pretty good. You have to look at the capital they put in. So the starting lineup last year uh, to start the season, our left tackle was a former first round pick. Our left guard was a former first round pick. Our center was a former second round pick first pick in the second round. Our right guard was a former first round pick and our right tackle was a former first round pick. You can, you give any other, position group on the field that kind of investment those kinds of draft picks and you're talking about the best unit in the world you're talking about getting guys stacked top to bottom but the offensive line for the saints for some reason couldn't put it together and you talked about how it took years for a wheeze to develop it took years for penning to develop he's still not there yet you know you had andrus pete couldn't even play the position he was drafted to play had to get moved over to the right side then he had to get moved over to, to the left side, and now he's a, he was a guard, and then he had to play tackle last year. The coaching has failed the team in a lot of different aspects. You can say that a lot with Dennis Allen as your head coach, but nowhere worse than the offensive line. The offensive line is a travesty to have been as bad it is, as it has been. And that's why I have so much hope for this unit going forward. It's a completely fresh take. you got guys in new positions. You have young blood across the board, basically. So we went from wasted talent last year to now going into this year our left tackle is a first round pick new one our right tackle is a first round pick that they moved over to right side ruiz is still a first round pick and you got sal Deveri. you got all this youth now there's no one no one is old uh the elder statesman of the group is mccoy and what well, we drafted him in 2018 19 so he's not old either you you went from having this this andrus pete ryan ramchek falling apart with bad coaches the coaching staff is gutted. The offensive system is gutted, and you have more youth injected into it. I have a lot of hope for this offensive line. Is it going to be the best in the world? Hell no. Absolutely not. You don't get like that overnight. But I think the system is going to hide a lot of deficiencies, and you can only be better than we were last year. So I think it's a little harsh to say they were going to be 32nd this year, but judging it off last year, yeah, totally fair. Absolutely. They sucked. Yeah, that's just sort of their point. Um, they're, you know, saying Ryan Ramchak's going to miss the entire season, and that's going to force us to play Trevor Penning after benching him the entire 2023 season. And then they point out Cesar Ruiz has failed to rank among the top 50 guards, according to PFF overall grade, in yeah. his first four seasons. So they're pretty much saying, hey, you got you to put in Penning, and Penning sucks. And then Ruiz, you, you, you're already playing him. He sucks, too. It's so your right <laughs> side of the line. So don't suck. That's what they're for saying. For anybody who doesn't know how PFF does things, they basically watch every play and they decide if a player wins or loses a rep, and it contributes to their score. So you got these 120-pound nerds sitting in a room staring at a computer trying to tell me how offensive lines are playing. All right. We were bad last year. Your ranking is just fine. I'm not going to fight you on that. But shut up, nerds. Get off your but keyboard. Hey up some pads. We love we love analytics though. We're we're always talking about no, the, the book. You love it down, right? I like hitting people. Absolutely not. 
<laughs> you know, you keep your spreadsheets in the in the classroom and let the grown men go push each other on the field. I, I mean, four down comes. We looking Ruiz, for the analytics. What does the book say? Ruiz was was solid last year, and he was really good the year before that. He did take a step back last year, but everyone did with Doug Marone driving you into the dirt. It's a bad coaching performance across the board in a system that did not benefit the O line. The, the offense had no had no idea what they were doing. It was always a run on second and long or whatever it was. It, it, they were put in the hardest position that they could have been in. And yeah, they struggled. They were bad. They were the worst offensive line in the NFL, probably. And they still didn't give up all that many sacks. Yeah, I mean, look, Derek Carr, um, Derek Carr, he, well, he he got hurt a lot because of the offensive line. So I will say the offensive line really killed his production last season. You can say the whole because season. Because he's playing hurt. Yeah, though, he, if he stays in that Green Bay game, do we win it? I don't know because if you the seventeen nothing lead with if your starting quarterback still in it, if you win that game, playoff team last year, does that change the yeah. entire mindset of all of the fans this year? If instead of a nine and eight team, we were a ten and seven team who went to the playoffs, is Dennis Allen's seat a little bit cooler? Is there well for sure? If if you make the playoffs, your seat is cooler. Um, I'm just saying, but, but that's that's the long and short of it. If he doesn't. If Carr doesn't get hurt, I don't think we lose that game. We might not lose the next See, game. I don't, I don't know that for sure, though, Greg, because that game, it was a freaking meltdown at the end. The defense sucked, okay? Yes, but it if gave they scored, any points. But if we had scored any points, they would have come up short. They would have pulled a, a, us against the Rams, you know? Yeah, but we had plenty of opportunity to score in that first half. We only mustered 17 yeah. points. And and so, seven were on a punt return. So it's not like he was letting Yes. Down. I agree. Yes. Um, and, and we, we continue to have the same struggles that we had the first half. We maybe get into some kind of field goal range and then and have to kick the field goal or screw up the field goal. But anyway, we didn't score touchdowns when we got into the red zone. And that was a problem early in the season last year, period. So <laughs> not it's all completely legitimate, man. It's just yeah. hard. To, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around that collapse happening if we're still getting first downs and still have our starting quarterback in the second half. That's just, but yeah, it, it is, it is a momentum changer when your quarterback goes Absolutely. out for your and, team. And I, and so. I downplay my momentum a lot. I, I kind of think it's, mm -hmm. it's fans, but at a certain point, you know, if, if you're pinning yours back because you know that it's Jameis Winston back there instead of Derek Carr, you right. might think, Oh, I'm, I'm going to get, um, we're going to force a turnover here or we can be more aggressive on offense because what are they going to do about it? They're going to score on us. So, I mean, it, it changes everything. Yeah, cause we we've seen it in the past too, right? Think about when uh when Teddy Bridgewater was the was the quarterback, mm. and he he had to start. The defense showed up, bro. It was a different defense during Shout the point to, in time. Yeah, Deontay Harris because he was still Harris yeah. back then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody stepped their game up, and and it's it's just it's a different mentality you have when your backup is is the starter. You know, it's mm. it's just a different way. It's different. Oh. All right, let's look at another rankings here. This is from ESPN. ESPN ranked the rosters of all the teams in the NFL, and the Saints are number 20. I probably wouldn't be upset with this. However, they put us behind these suckers, the dirty oh. Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Your thoughts here, Craig? <laughs> all right, Luggins. To be fair to ESPN, and I will never repeat a kind word about them because I hate ESPN. Uh, on paper, I think the Falcons probably do have a better, I don't know, offensive roster at least. Their defense is bad. I don't know why people think it's going to be good this year. They they had a, a bit of a turnaround with a coordinator that is no longer there, so I'm not sure why anyone thinks they're going to be a good unit. Uh, I would be more mad if the Buccaneers were ahead of us because I think that roster is absolutely overrated. Uh, yeah, I get the Falcons one. I get it. You know, people like Bijan Robinson. They like Kirk Cousins, even though I'm pretty sure he's going to be hobbled after that leg injury at his age. Uh, you know, people like Kyle Pitts, even though he's an absolute bust who's never done in the NFL. People like Drake London, even though he's an absolute bust who's done nothing in the NFL. People like those names because of where they were drafted and whatnot. So I get it. I understand. It's stupid. I don't, don't agree with it, but I get it. Also, fuck Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
In case that was, in case that was crap. <laughs> I think they're going to win a bunch of games. Come on, it's Atlanta. Come on, y'all. No Man, better. I, I would, I wouldn't even be surprised if they won like three. If they just fell off a cliff, they probably won't. They'll probably be be hanging around there because they do have a lot of names on offense, but they're just names, you know. I, I have. Can you name any of their offensive linemen? They got a good guard. Is that enough? Is that enough to, to solidify that unit and keep an aging, banged up quarterback healthy? Jake Matthews is the name I know on on the team. That's really it mm. <laughs> on the offensive line. That's the that's the name I know. <laughs> He's solid, uh, you know. I'm not. I'm all right home about it though. I'm not going to do any uh, any breakdowns about him on the Big Ugly podcast. <laughs> okay. All right. So, but the Saints roster here now. This this looks great right here. Right. This looks amazing. Okay. It's looked worse. Crystal Olave and Shahid. Now I am concerned about tight end though, because uh, Jawan Johnson being injured um how and then the fact that in this offense tight end is pretty important yeah so i expected him to really take off in this offense and the fact that he's hurt you know that 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 sucks so he's not gonna have an off season pretty much in this offense he's got to learn on the fly Uh, and and he's and it's a position that's important we didn't invest in it because we were counting on guys like moreau went to LSU so he's probably going to suck uh and Johnson <laughs> develop and and Johnson can't develop in the offense because he's silent with a foot injury you know we're talking about a position group that's probably going to have two UDFAs make the team that's not a good sign dude that's bad I don't mm. like that at all I mean Taysom's going to chew a little bit of that up but you don't want him in line blocking he's a 30 something year old failed quarterback you want him blocking on running downs so yeah Man, I could see making a move if if Johnson's not going to be ready. I mean, he's not going to be ready for training camp. If he's not ready for like preseason games, I might go get somebody, even if it's just a body who can block. Man, I, that's a, that's a scary looking position. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's definitely a concern for me too, man. Um, I, 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 from what I've been hearing in the offseason, I mean, they got him kind of listed here as tight end, but uh, Taysom Hill's been like more of a fullback mm-hmm. um, this offseason. Um, so tell me about your concerns with him and his age and then coming to this kind of running back role. How do you think his season is going to pan out this this year? I think the games he plays in are going to be awesome. That he's going to kick a bunch of ass. And I also think that there's a reason no one ever gave him that many carries in a season. And I don't think he's going to make it 17 games. That's one of my, I'm, I'm known for being very optimistic on this show. Uh, and in general, because I'm a nice guy, but I don't see him playing 17 games. I think he's going to get hurt. It's a lot of pounding, man. You're talking about when you're when you're a kid and you're an offensive lineman and you have delusions of grandeur. You're like, oh, I could play fullback because that's you get to hit people. If a lineman wants to do your job, it's not a pretty glorious job. He's he's going to get hit a lot on on downs. He doesn't have the ball sometimes, so that's uh, that scares the hell out of me. As someone who likes to watch Taysom Hill run and catch and throw and do a fun stuff, uh, you know, I, I think he's going to be really exciting while healthy. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what he can do. I am not as worried for the injuries. Um, Taysom has been relatively healthy in New Orleans. But, yeah, it, it has been because of the usage. Um and they ever talk about new usage for him. Uh, and I mean on, on kickoffs because of the new kickoff rules. Maybe, maybe see AK back there as well. Um yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just I'm just assuming he will be. Um, but that's that's more usage for Taysom. Mm-hmm. So maybe, but then they just they did something with his contract too, right? So um that means he's probably going to end up being on the team next year too. So it's not a situation where they can just use him up and throw him away. Right. Um, yeah. I think they got to be smart with Taysom. The, yeah. They're invested in him past the season. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if that means anything. Oh, we're talking about the saints. So how much dead money are they going to pay Cam Jordan? He's going to have one of those Bobby Bonilla. Contracts. <laughs> he's getting a million dollars until he's 95. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, Basically, uh, Ramtech's contract this year is dead money. 
I guess I know it's not it's not on the books that way, but it's a his lot body worse is not there. Just let him be crippled. Yes. On the, a lot worse if he retires. Yes. Absolutely. Can y'all hear I, that? I get it. There's a fly the size of a hummingbird bugging around me right now. Can y'all hear that on the audio? <laughs> okay. So let's talk uh, defensive line real quick. We did get news that Chase Young um, got some good news from the doc. Uh, when he underwent that neck surgery uh, for the offseason, uh, it looks like he will be able to participate in training camp. Ooh. So that is definitely Ooh. positive news after after we got the news after he signed the contract. He got neck surgery. <laughs> Who doesn't get neck surgery right before playing football, right? I mean, then that <laughs> you don't just go get your neck scoped out just for fun every other Tuesday. Come on, it's, yeah, right. what, what's a little neck surgery among friends? <laughs> fun. Exactly, right. Exactly. I'm happy about it, man. That's that's probably our most talented defensive player outside of what Lattimore. Like it, he has, he was drafted second overall. It, it is such right. a pile of potential to be on uh, to be tapped into. With the guys around him, like Cam Jordan and the coaching staff that have built him into what he is, like th- there's there's no reason he can't be elite, elite, like really good. And he's already one of the best run defenders in the NFL. He could put together some of that pass rush moves that he's kind of he, he gets by on athleticism, but if he kind of refines that a little bit, like the the defensive end position is so frustrating because it has more talent than maybe any other position group outside of offensive line. And it was bad last year. It is maddening that there is so much talent at these spots. I, I think some of them got to break through. I don't know if it's Turner or if it's Young or if it's Foskey. One of them is going to break through and we're going to have a, a, a monster on the opposite of Cam Jordan. Or opposite uh, Granderson. Mean, uh, okay, I'm about to say, you, you yeah. meant Granderson. <laughs> it's, been like, it's been like 12 years, all right? I'm used to saying opposite Cam. <laughs> yep, yep. And look, I mean, look, Cam is going to be a contributor in in our opinion th- this year. Um, that's we, we just he's he's going to be on the farewell tour eventually. <laughs> um, but yeah, Grant Grandison is 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 our top dog. But when you have those many other options, it's it's a shotgun approach, and I'm totally fine with the shotgun approach because something got to hit. And it's a fresh legs approach, man. There is no one's going to be out there fatigued. You got bodies to to run through. Yes, I yes, like that. Absolutely. You know, I would absolutely. be really worried about about Granderson um, uh, have, having that starting job if he was just an Anderson. I'd be really worried, but he's not. He's a Granderson, okay? Exactly. And that makes me feel a lot better. Uh, exactly. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what in the hell is going on with the Saints' training camp schedule? They have not announced any practices for Saints fans in Southern California. Yep. Now, they have announced uh, they're going to be practicing at Tulane. They're going to be practicing in the Dome. But this is going to be like all the way in August after mm. you watch some preseason games. At that point, you don't care about practice. You don't want to see any more preseason. You just want to see regular season games. Want right? everybody wrapped up in bubble wrap <laughs> until September by that point. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, and so now we're waiting on to hear what we're going to hear from uh, – for the training camp season in Southern California, especially you, since you're out in Southern California, and yeah. we're hoping to get some kind of coverage going on. Yeah, they're, they're, what the hell's going yeah, on? Yeah, Irvine. It's a uh, I think they're setting up. It's what an hour down the road from me. It's it's very local. Um, what I'm hearing is that they're all going to be closed. They're not going to have open open uh, practices for, for fans. That's that's the rumor going around down here is that they aren't going to have fans. Uh, which I mean, I guess I get it. You know, they have joint practices with a couple of different teams. Maybe Dennis Allen wants that bunker mentality, us against the world, keep the distractions out. I get it, man. I don't, I don't like it. I was going to be down there, you know. I was going to bring my my daughters, and she likes football. Right. But you know, it's uh, it's one of those things. Yeah, if if they want to do it, then they're assholes, and I hate them. Yeah, that's that's weird, man. Look, the the NFL should definitely be promoting um, all the practices in uh training camp look they have the crap on tv all this time and stuff like get the fans out there man like the players enjoy uh the juice they get from the fans mm. trust me they, they like the oohs and ahs so let, let them let them come out there man i understand they're away from home but yo let let them let them get some new fans and yeah, just for, in for, general for, fans of the nfl want to come see it 
Mm -hmm. Especially when they got the joint practices and stuff going on. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the Niners, I think they have some with, with the Cowboys. Maybe it's Chargers. I forget. I'm drinking. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it would it would suck if they did that. But, uh, you know, it's uh, everything sucks here in Southern California. So what are you going to do? <laughs> well, that's why you're out there, man. You're going to change things around. Well, Craig's going to be the guy that saves California. Remember, guys, it's a dry heat, right? So the fact that it's 101 degrees right now doesn't mean anything because at least it's dry. Right, guys? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's different. <laughs> that's that's all I got so far today, man. Do you have anything else I might have forgotten about, Craig? Man, I'm just I'm waiting for the football, man. I can't wait. I uh, can't wait for practicing. I can't wait for you know over analyzing everything that Nick Underhill tells us. I can't wait for arguing with you about how bad the Saints are gonna be. I is I'm ready for it. I'm ready for some Saints. I'm you turn on the TV and you have to watch some politics for 30 seconds. Man, I want anything but <laughs> anything but state of American politics right now. I want to talk about some football. Shit, I'll talk about some baseball. You got time for that? I don't care. Just get out of here. Is there any podcast <laughs> you know, that talks about all kinds of sports I could find? Oh, yeah, actually, there is. You know, we, we launched a new podcast on the network. It's called Top of the Bleachers. Uh, they, they go on every Monday at four central. So be sure to check them out. You know, it's my guy, big, my guy, tuck. They're talking all sports, NBA, WNBA, you know, college football, all that stuff, man. They, they're talking everything. So Solid. be sure to check them out. That's right, man. All right, Craig. Well, we're wrapping this thing up. Um, got any shout outs or anything like that, man? No shout out to the saints. That's what I want to be watching right now. <laughs> be, be sure to come back to the season for the beer run that's going to be our our weekly show mid-season where we're going to drink more than we're going to talk and uh that's my favorite way to do things because life tastes better when you're chugging yeah yeah exactly we're going to have uh people from other teams other fans for other teams on and uh we're going to be chopping up with them and telling them that the saints are the best team and their team sucks that's basically what we do so, unless you're fun Dale, in case you're going to hate on the saints unless they have lsu players <laughs> <laughs> well look if lsu players come to town craig like you know but the honey badger's not enough for you i'd say just be happy with what we have <laughs> jake daniels is coming to town soon so Oof. <laughs> all right we're wrapping this thing up so for craig the california cajun i am dale this is bs and bourbon we'll see you next time who that who that Remember to follow us on social media at BSN Beer Media. Also, smash the like button on YouTube and share with friends. I'm a good, I'm a good.